ever wish that you could just magically generate new ideas for your songs in seconds? Sometimes the imagination well runs dry and you just need a little push to get you up and running again. Drew Swisher here with Musician on a Mission and today I'm gonna to be showing you how MIDI effects can help you get quick inspiration for your songs and create super unique sounds. From dust to dust, all right, so MIDI effects are exactly what they sound like. They're effects you can use inside your DAW to change the sound of a MIDI track. They're a lot like plugins, but instead of modifying audio, they change the actual MIDI data. As you can see, Logic has tons of MIDI effects to choose from, and I use these all the time when I'm trying to come up with new ideas or make something really interesting. And to show you just how powerful these can be, I'm gonna be going over how MIDI effects can help you create chord progressions, find rhythms, inspire melodies, and create some cool background textures. And once that's done, we're just gonna totally wreck whatever sound I've made with bonkers effects. So stick around to see the utter destruction of whatever I end up making today. I'm using Logic Pro X, so this is gonna translate the easiest if you also have Logic, but a ton of other DAWs have these same tools. Ableton in particular has a lot of great MIDI effects. I'm not gonna cover all the MIDI effects in Logic because some are more useful than others, and once you get started, I think you'll be able to figure out the others really easily. But let's go ahead and cover the most important MIDI effects, the ones that you're gonna use all the time. You know, I'll show you how they work in more depth afterwards, but let's just talk about some of these big ones. So first you've got the arpeggiator, which just like it says, it's uh, gonna arpeggiate the notes you play. And you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. As you can tell, there's lots of ways to change the arpeggiation and we'll get into that a little bit more later. There's also the modulator, which has an LFO and an envelope, and you can assign both of these to any parameter on your track, any MIDI or synth parameter. Uh, it's super useful for making sounds that evolve over time. If you aren't familiar with LFOs or envelopes, make sure to check out my video on the basics of synths. I cover them both in detail there. And one of the other key effects is Scripter, and it's aptly named, as you can see here, there's actual scripting, actual coding, and you can use it to actually write your own MIDI effect codes. So if you wanted to make a totally unique sound, you could. And it's actually got tutorial scripts in here to teach you how to do that. It's not a steep learning curve. Definitely check it out if you're interested in that. But today, we're actually just gonna be checking out these presets that already come with it. So those are the most important MIDI effects to understand and I'm gonna cover them in more detail and there are a bunch of others in here that we're also gonna talk about. But I don't want you to just know that these exist and you can use them inside your DAW. I wanna show you why they're useful and why you might wanna use them in the first place. So let's start out with uh, figuring out a chord progression. There's a couple ways to do this with MIDI effects. Uh, you could go to the scripter and they've got the uh, guitar strummer so I'm just playing a single MIDI note right now. Oh, well, it sure, sure sounds like I'm just playing a single MIDI note. There we go. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of pitch bend in there. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the chord strummer, uh, just like its name would suggest, plays guitar chord voicings. They're pretty open, and if you don't want a guitar sound, there's another thing you can use. There's the chord trigger, and this has a bunch of different options. It's also got guitar voicings, but there's also keyboard voicings. So yeah, there's just a ton of different chord choices you can pick from. There's the multi ones, and what that means is, you know, they have different types of chords that will play, uh, depending on what note you're playing on your keyboard or on the musical typing. Or there's these single ones, which are just single types of chords, and you'd have to mix and match between these probably to get anything that sounds good. And uh, I kind of want to mess around with that. So let's see, let's see how this sounds. This is going to be a fun chord. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's pick something a little more typical. So as you can hear, it's really easy to build a chord this way, but you kind of have to mix and match between these to get something that would sound like a typical chord progression. You know, you don't normally have songs that are just all major sevenths. It'll mix between different things. So let's try that now. I'm just gonna play around and see if I find something that sounds cool. Uh, 
Okay, I've got a chord progression that I think sounds pretty cool here. It goes from a uh, A minor seventh add nine down to uh, G major seventh. F major seven add nine. Then uh, back to that A minor, the G major. And then we're uh, going to E major seven. So uh, let's go ahead and write that out. Uh, you know, I can't actually, unfortunately, automate between the different chords here uh, unless there's uh, an automation parameter that I'm missing inside of here. So I'm just gonna have to actually play these or write these in. Okay, cool, I've got it added in here now. Oh, that sounds awful, I forgot to turn the chord trigger off, there we go. So yeah, we've got that going. Now let's get started on a rhythm. And uh, I'm gonna pull up uh, Ultra Beat, Drum Synth and Logic. And uh, let's see, I'm kind of thinking like an electro sound for this. Okay, cool, I got a drum kit that sounds pretty cool to me. And now we're gonna use MIDI effects to actually create the drum rhythm. So I'm gonna use the uh, sequencer inside of Scripter, and just like the name suggests, this lets you create a sequence of notes. So let's see, uh, rate of 1 16th, that sounds good to me. Uh, and let's just start uh, figuring out how we want this to sound. Okay, so I've got something that sounds cool to me, but uh, when it loops, it feels a bit weird. Let me show you what I mean. That first kick shouldn't be there in the, uh, the loop. So I've uh, duplicated the track and let's copy it on here. And I'm, gonna sh I'm just gonna go into Scripter and get rid of that first kick for when it loops. Turning off the gate, which means that it's not going to voice that. Uh, and I've set the pitch to C. That's how it's uh, triggering the kick there. Uh, you know, when it goes to the uh, snare, it's going to D. It's not the most intuitive sequencer to use. If you've got a better one, honestly, I suggest you just use that. But you can use this as your sequencer. So let's check it out. Yeah, that's a lot better. So let's go ahead and uh, copy these over. And I'm actually gonna turn this down quite a bit, uh, both of them, because it's uh, it's a bit too much. Cool, so we've already got chords and uh, drums, and that's all just using MIDI effects. You know, in any of these situations, I was just playing single notes to figure out these chords, and these are just holding a single note as they run through this sequence. So you can do really powerful stuff just by holding down one note and using MIDI effects. Now, let's add some movement to our chords. We're gonna fill out the rhythm a little more by adding an arpeggiator to this keyboard. So let me go ahead and throw the arpeggiator on there, and let me just show you how it sounds by default. You know, fun, but not what we're looking for. So uh, there's a few different ways you can use this. You could play live, uh, and that's just going to kind of like generate an arpeggio depending on how many notes you're playing and what you've selected up here. Uh, and then there's the grid, which will let you actually write in when you want the arpeggio to play. So for example, I can turn these on and it's going to play on those beats. Uh, and if I fill it out more, you know, we're gonna get more. You can get some cool stuff really quickly. Uh, you can turn on chords down here. So instead of uh, just playing a single note, it's going to actually play the full chord there. That's a great way to get comping really easily. So instead of having to just like play the actual comp rhythm yourself, you can just drop in the chords and then just turn on an arpeggiator and uh, get some chords going there. You've also got variation up here, which will uh, quite literally vary which notes are being played at what moments. It'll still follow the uh, chords you've got set up. It's just uh, going to pick a different note from within that chord to play if it's not, you know, set as a chord. See, there's some slight difference. You got octave range, which exactly what it sounds like. 
turns up the uh, range of octaves. You can change the rate. So if I wanted something really fast, let's see how this sounds. Absolutely bonkers. But you can also just pick from these uh, pick from these presets. So let's check out these simple chord grooves. Cool stuff. It already sounds really awesome. That's nice. Let's see how it sounds with the drums. Uh, let's check that. It feels a little boring. Let's check this one. I'm gonna turn the velocity down a little bit. But that sounds pretty cool to me. Yeah, simple chord groove eight sounds pretty cool to me on this part, so let's just run with it. So now that that's done, let's try and inspire a melody. There are two central rules to using MIDI effects to figure out a melody. You wanna keep it simple and keep it in the right key. MIDI effects rely on randomization a lot, so it can be really easy to end up with something that's just absolutely bonkers and a melody that makes no sense. So here's how I do it. Uh, I'm gonna find a cool sound, you know, let's go with retro synth maybe. That's got all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and uh, I could make my own sound, uh, which would be fun, but right now let's just grab something they've got here. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's cool enough. And uh, next let's get our MIDI effects going. So here's what I do. If I'm uh, stuck on a melody and I'm just trying to figure one out, first I'll grab the randomizer and this literally randomizes whatever value you tell it to. So here I can tell it what I want it to randomize. You know, I could randomize the uh, pitch bend or the velocity, but I'm going to randomize the note number, which is literally randomizing what pitch is being played. And the input range is uh, where on the keyboard will trigger this randomization. And here we can change the range of randomization. So I don't, you know, a melody, you don't want it to be just like totally all over the place. So let's bring this in a little bit. You could also weight it a little bit to the higher end or to the lower. And let's just see how it sounds. I'm hitting the same note on my keyboard. I'm just hitting uh, A natural and it's generating all these different pitches. But uh, as you can imagine, if we play that over the chords, oh, pff, gotta solo the thing you're playing. It quickly becomes absolutely bonkers. And we actually need to bring this, uh, bring the range in a little bit, so. That's a little bit better. I'm gonna weight it to the higher. So we need to figure out a way to make sure this is in the right key. And we can do that easily with the transposer. So just like it suggests with the name, the transposer lets you transpose things up to different keys. If I were to put it on the keyboard track right now, uh, we could put this in uh, whatever key we wanted. You know, I could say, oh, let's bring this up uh, a fourth. So what I wanna do right now though, is uh, not transpose this to a different uh, key or anything, but just make sure that everything that comes out of the randomizer is in the right key. So we can set the uh, root and then set the type of scale, you know, if it's a major, pentatonic, natural minor, and then every note that comes out of the randomizer now is gonna be uh, quantized to that scale. So that's all in A natural minor. This is gonna be a little bit tricky because we got some borrowed chords in here, so there might be some weird stuff. But after that, I'll just start playing through the track. You know, I'll loop it and playing things at a steady rhythm and just seeing if anything sounds cool. As you can tell, it's not perfect. You know, it, it still sounds a little bit weird. I'm not trying to totally create a melody from scratch. I'm trying to just see if I hear something that sounds cool that'll inspire the rest of a melody. So let's just keep playing until something sounds nice. 
Okay, cool. So I found something that sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, let me show you what it is. I heard this while I was playing with the randomizer. Yeah, that just that. And uh, that inspired the rest of this melody. So yeah, that sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, you know, honestly, this isn't my preferred way to come up with a melody. A lot of the time I find that something that I totally come up with myself feels a little bit more natural to me than something that comes from the uh, randomization with MIDI effects. But that being said, if you're really stuck and you're kind of at a last resort spot, you really gotta find something catchy, this is a good way to get out of your head about it and just, play around, experiment a little bit until you find something cool. Okay, so I got distracted. Uh, I was just having fun playing around with this. I think it sounds cool. Uh, and I wrote a bass part. I didn't use any MIDI effects for it, as you can see right here, but it sounds cool to me. Let's check it out. Wow, that is so loud. I kind of like this better than the melody, honestly. I'm just gonna take that out and just replace it with this bass. Yeah, that sounds a lot cooler to me. I know this is a video about MIDI effects and this is a part written without them, but I think that kind of hammers home my last point. You know, the randomizer approach of finding melodies uh, is good for if you're really stuck, but if you if you have a different idea for a melody that you come up with yourself, you, you might want to trust that instinct a little bit more. All right, last up is my favorite thing to use MIDI effects for, and that's background textures. These are things like pads and arpeggios that sound great just pushed behind all of the other instruments. And uh, I'm literally just gonna copy and paste our chords to another track, find a different synth sound. This one's got kind of a fun retro vibe to it. And then it's time to get weird. Uh, one thing you can do is put stutter on the track. So that's inside of Scripter. Uh, and let me go ahead and grab it. It does exactly what it says. It repeats the sound on itself a bunch till it sounds like the instrument's stuttering. Yeah, that sounds really cool to me, just that uh, really cool repeating sound and I've sent it to this reverb and it turns it into this really cool pad. And if we turn this down, so the original source down, that way we're getting a little bit more of that reverb. I think that could fit in really interestingly with the rest of the track. Of course, you gotta check how it sounds with the rest of the track. Yeah, there's a little bit of EQ cleaning that we'd wanna do, obviously, but that sounds pretty cool to me. Another thing you can do is take an unobtrusive sound, something like a string pluck, and just arpeggiate it. So let me do that real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and arpeggiate this. Drop those chords down there. And uh, a lot of the time when I'm doing this, I just cycle through the presets and then just kinda mangle some of the uh, settings up here. Obviously we wouldn't want chords for this. That's gonna be a bit too, uh, taking up a little bit too much space. That's wild. Ooh, this isn't bad. I'm gonna pull that bass down some more. But let's pop it up an octave, see how that sounds. And then we're gonna wanna send this probably to a different reverb, you know, that other one was so huge. Let's, uh, let's check out something else now. Mix 
it in. That's nice, and you can uh, automate the panning on this or maybe uh, throw a tremolo on here to throw it from side to side, and that would be a really cool way to make this just add some movement and excitement to the track. You can really go as far down the rabbit hole with these effects as you want. There's note repeater, which repeats notes. Uh, this is the part where I absolutely destroy what I've made here. So actually, maybe let's, uh, let's check out what we've created before I mangle it. And aside from that bass line, uh, I figured all this out with only playing one single note at a time and just using MIDI effects to generate the rest of it. So that's how powerful these things are. So uh, let's go ahead and grab note repeater and just uh, mangle this sound. Let's, uh, let's do it on the drums. This is gonna be really weird. Actually, I'm gonna loop this so you can really, really hear what I'm doing to the sound. Uh, note repeater does exactly what it says. It repeats the notes. Beautiful, it sounds so good. If you turn up the repeats, you'll get more of them. Oh wow, we're clipping here, sorry about that. Let me turn this down. <laughs> if you transpose, uh, it'll turn the uh, repeats up one note uh, when they're repeated and the velocity ramp will either let you decrescendo or crescendo the repeats. That sounds kind of cool, actually. Oh, okay, wow. Uh, well, one thing we could do if we wanted to use this sound is uh, go to Scripter, and in there they've got the probability gate. And uh, what that does is it uh, decreases the likelihood of any given MIDI note actually being played. So we could take this chaotic soup and uh, maybe turn it into some kind of cool polyrhythmic beat. You know, if we turn the probability down, then we'd end up with this. So yeah, if you're uh, making a 100 Gex tribute band, then uh, you could go with that sound and that could be pretty fun. And uh, you can use modulator to modulate any MIDI parameters you want. So you just uh, tell it what you want it to change. Uh, and you do that down here. Here's the, uh, here's the send from the LFO and here's the send from the envelope. So let's, uh, let's tell this LFO to modulate something. You can either pick something from this drop down here or just tell it to learn a plugin parameter. And as long as it's a MIDI parameter on the same track as the modulator, it'll be able to, it'll be able to change it. So what would be, what would be fun? Let's uh, let's check out this vibrato here. Oh wow, that sounds so good. What if we turn up the rate? That, that actually does sound kind of cool. <laughs> okay, let's use the uh, envelope now to modulate something. So same thing, learn plugin parameter, and we'll just pick something on here. There's all kinds of stuff to choose from, but uh, what if we say, oh, this is going to change the mix between the two oscillators. Oh, that sounds so good. So yeah, you can get absolutely wild with it. You know, I could do literally anything with this. I could modulate the uh, amount of chorus on this bass. I could uh, modulate the amount of distortion on the keys. There's so many options. You can use this in a ton of different ways on your tracks. I could even uh, modulate the uh, notes that the bass is playing by, uh, let's see, I'll grab the modulator and uh, then we'll also throw a transposer on here and uh, we will assign the LFO to the transpose. Oh wow, that's a beautiful sight. This is gonna sound absolutely bonkers. So, 
So yeah, you can do just absolutely wild stuff. Obviously, you don't want to just throw stuff on a song for no reason. Experimenting with this stuff is great and can yield awesome results, but you won't want to use everything you get from it, unless you're making experimental generative music, in which case, knock your socks off. So yeah, MIDI effects are super powerful. I really recommend you check them out. You can use them to build an entire song with uh, minimal effort in a matter of 30 minutes. Uh, I really recommend that you use them more so uh, as touchstones, you know, rather than building an entire track out of MIDI effects, unless you want to challenge yourself to do that. Uh, you're better off using these as additions to songs that you've already got going, and maybe you just need a little push in a different direction with to get a fresh start on it. But MIDI effects are just one small part of creating great music from home. You can be an absolute wizard with them and still end up with songs that feel lackluster. So if you really want to get the most out of every mix, make sure to check out this free workshop Rob Mazes from Musician on a Mission made. He goes over the seven steps to getting radio ready mixes and shows you his approach to home recording and mixing, which will help you do all of this way faster. 36,000 people have already done this workshop, and it really only took a few days for them to start seeing results. So check it out if you want to avoid wasting your time and money on the wrong things and learn the seven steps you need to make pro mixes. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you really like this video and you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, that's all for me. I'm Drew Swisher with Musician on a Mission. I'll see you again soon. And remember, create regardless.